cargando con el pulpo my good old fan Swede has never seen my bathroom because I never had a light before or a phone I could take in there and actually now I do so welcome to my toilet no it's not out here dog fight just a minute ago. Ugh. It's over here. It's kind of dark. There's no lights. And it is filthy. It's actually not shit, that's just the color of the water out here. Oh. Oh. Let's take a good poo <coughs> and talk about what should we talk about while we poo? What that flashlight really bothers me. Can't open my eyes and shit. Here we are in the year 2015. There's still a border between the United States and Mexico. There's still a border between Canada and the United States. There's still borders everywhere that are controlled by passports and by people with weapons. And there's still a war in the Middle East. A big, crazy war. And there's a border between North and South Korea and borders everywhere I go is borders and uh, ask yourselves what have you done about that there's still people selling people and uh, factory farms and there's still rape of of um, the land and Rape farming with the Tony and uh, it was Tony. No, it was Art. Art Stortle calls it rape farming. It's a kind of um, farming where they knock everything out and they pollute the ground with fertilizers, very toxic fertilizers, and they force force the land to give its yield in a very unwholesome manner. And the little farmers, the people that are actually close to the ground and that can, you know, work the farms, they're disappearing, giving way to the uh, to the factory farms. The world is smaller. We are now all in contact through the internet, through this telephone, through this this uh, rock. This talking rock that talks across the oceans as the, uh, the Hadiths speak about. <sighs> and um, we're all in a war for our souls, whether we know it or not. It's a daily war. And it's a weird war because it's it, it, you can't really tell who's going to win and who's going to lose because I think peace, inner peace, is what's winning, and what, what wins in the end. A kind of profound uh, acceptance. The, the word that my strength used the other day was accept. I have to accept. I have to be accepting. I have to accept whatever it is that I have. You know, I have to accept my role in this world. My role in this body. Um, <laughs> yeah. The John is a good place to meditate and to think. And my job here is to make my thoughts words. And here's the tricky part. The, uh, the Gita says that the most 
unmanageable of organs is the tongue. So whatever I'm saying is probably wrong at some level, somewhere, somehow. And I recognize that because it is not... Because I'm in a human body and with a human mind and a human heart. And that's imperfect in its doings and its words. What words can I say without falling into... Let's call it sin. Um, the truth. The only thing I can look for is the truth in my words. When <coughs> uh, I lie, I burp, I fart. It's something I've learned about myself. Probably because of the drug use. All the mushrooms and peyote that I've eaten <laughs> gave me a little gift of lie. Auto lie detector, lie detector for my own self. A frog in my throat. Um, so, what is worth speaking of? I think the best words have been said already by guys like Jesus, like Krishna, Buddha, Mahoma, Muhammad, they say in English. Um, these words are not to be questioned, they're not to be pondered upon, they're just to be listened and understood. So, what is the truth? Well, the truth for Krishna is one truth, the truth for Jesus is another, the truth for Buddha is another, the truth for Muhammad is another. And within all those truths, there's a great truth, there's a grand truth, there's a truth truth. The true true, as they say. <laughs> the true true, right? Uh, and the true true, well, I hope it has to do with love. I hope it has to do with loving each other. I hope it has to do with being tender to each other and loving. And when I get really stoned, I have a hard time loving. It's, it's a sad effect of my stony experience. And that is a, I suppose it's an effect of the years of going into places to get stone where there are people that are trying to measure their cock size by how much they can smoke. That's the way the mobs will work out here. The, you know, the mobsters in Mexico, they all want to be badass when they smoke. So, there's an underlying, underlying hostility in smoking in Mexico. It is not a hostility I find in the United States as much because it's legal there. But even there, it's kind of like, you know, there's always the non-smoker saying to the smokers, well, you're stoned, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm not stoned right now, but I haven't smoked anything yet. I'm just taking a shit. Uh, some folks would probably accuse me of having a always stone mind. I wish it was so simple. I wish it was so cool. Um, what is going on with me? Well, my health is not so good. I, I'm feeling the, the um, abuses of my own body. My intoxication of animal flesh, meat, the meat factory, and, um, yeah, it's not cool, because I'm fat, and I'm short of breath, and I shit weird, you know, so I need to go into a different realm of consciousness for eating better, or just giving up the body altogether, just, you know letting go of the uh, body sense that holds me onto this planet. Not a suicidal guy, though. You know, it's not like suicide is interesting to me. I tried it already. Been there, done that, as they say. Once with once with my heart broken by Beata Stolte Ofertal. Ofertal. Uh, I was going to jump off a building. Then I was going to jump off a castle. 
in Heidelberg and drink some Drano. I went as far as buying the Drano. I didn't drink it, though. So I guess I'm not that suicidal after all. Some of my acts have been pretty foolhardy. Not suicidal, but foolhardy. I, I guess it's because I don't have a lot of fears and death and all that shit. I don't like pain. I mean, I'm not into pain. I, I get painful events happening to me at times because of my bad decision making. Um, and I'm trying to find wisdom in all this. I, I'm trying to, to find wisdom in my own existence and my own shit. I'm trying to shit my wisdom out. And all I get is a wisdom tooth, huh? I have no children. I'm 47 years old. I uh, send money to my mother and to my sister to take care of them and help them. And I, um, I have lived on the bridges and in vehicles. And I have worked, and sometimes I have not worked. And I, I get disability from the state of California because I'm crazy. Or so they say. Or so I say, actually. You have to accept that you're crazy to get the... The money. How crazy is that? Um, a big critic of our world, our human world. I, I'm not a very, very big fan of humanity most of the time. Because what I see in people is kind of, yeah, not very cool. I see their madness, and it represents itself every act they do they, their hypocrisy their anger their lust their madness I have met good beings I have met good human beings one or two Paramadveti Swami is one of them I believe I don't believe there's too much darkness in him once I actually saw him speaking against um, the meat eaters, and there was such fury in him that it was kind of spooky. But speaking about against meat eaters is not necessarily a bad thing to do if you're a human being on the planet Earth in the year 2015, even though there are a lot of meat eaters. Demonizing them is perfectly acceptable, in a sense, because they are acting very demonically, and they don't even know it. You know, They're not aware. They're unaware. Not like me that I am aware and I'm still acting demonically. <laughs> it's a pretty cool shadow there. So is my shadow as big as I am? Or is it bigger? And um what about that? What about acting upon pleasurable things with no care for the sinfulness of it, even though you recognize the sinfulness of things? sexual things, intoxicating things, meat-eating things. Vaishnavas, which is the religion of my mother, recognize four sins, four, four no-nos. Intoxication, meat-eating, gambling, and uh, illegal or uncouth or sinful sex. Sinful, sinful sex is, for them means sex outside of marriage. I wonder if a tantric Buddhist would accept the sinful sex theory as, this, as, as, as correct. Probably not. So is a tantrist a demon? The uh, Vaishnavas say that the biggest demons there are are the um, I have a word for it, and I forgot the word. The, um, Mayavadi. Mayavadi. Um, Brahmanas and the Mayavadi, um, people. Those are the people that understand the Vedas as truthful, but do not understand the form of Krishna as the ultimate and most divine and most perfect form of God. And there's a lot of them out there. There's a lot of Mayavadis. Krishnamurti, um, Sai Baba, you know, there's Ram Das, maybe. There's 
a lot of them out there who in kind of, you know, they get into the, uh, the effulgence of Brahma as the ultimate form of God. God doesn't have a personality, they say. And uh, the Vaishnavas, well, they say that God has a personality and it's Krishna. And that's the ultimate primordial essential personality of God. And uh, that's a very interesting argument. I mean, it's, it's a, is there a perfect being, a perfect life? Was Jesus one of them? Was um, Buddha one of them? Krishna, Rama? There are um, a whole bunch of avatars. In fact, the Bhagavatam says that the avatars of Krishna, of Vishnu, are endless. There's no end to them. That kind of makes sense to me infinite number of forms of God as the sustainer of the universe, the personality that sustains the universe. The truth, the truth, the truth, the truth, the way of the... So is that what Krishna, Jesus, and Buddha were trying to say? Is, is that the union between, the, the common point between all of them? Or am I missing something? In fact, Bodhisattvic vow would include beings like Kalima and Shiva and a whole host of very, very terrible beings. Uh, rebellious souls like Lucifer. Could be a Bodhisattva because Bodhisattva vow, vow says that you uh, you vow um, not to be free until you have made all other beings free. Well, if that's not the devil, I don't know who else could say that. It's a very devilish thing to say. It's you always be in chains. You always be chained to karma until you're free from it. By making all the other beings, conscious beings, sentient beings, free. That's what I understood of the Bodhisattva vow. Maybe I'm wrong. By the way, um, to all you Buddhists and Hindus, and um, I'm always welcome. I'm always, well, I always welcome um, opinions, and um, I'm very hard to change my opinions once I once I make up my mind about something. <sighs> it's very difficult for me to change it. But occasionally I learn new stuff, like uh, I, hadn't, I hadn't read the Bhagavatam before, and I've been reading it lately, and it's like, wow, revelation. I had to re-think a lot of my stuff, um, which is good. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Yeah. And... Um, If you smoke enough, when you see a little light at the end of the tunnel type thing, you see a little light here, like this light over here, it just spreads into this tunnel of psychedelia, like the little tunnel that I saw over there at, when I was dying with the shrooms, which I've already told you guys about. If you guys don't find that video, it's not my fault. I've made it for you. Um, and it's, it's any light in the dark. It's going to be psychedelic at the, round of the, uh, the borders of it. And that's just the way that big light is at the end of the tunnel. That light we all know about. So, As you can see, I have no paper. No three. But the water is. That's done. And I uh, thank you for watching my shit. 
If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to put uh, subscribe and uh, watch other videos of me shitting and doing other crazy shit. And uh, if you don't like this video, well, don't worry about it. You can you can watch other things. I, I'm not gonna waste your time. Um, but I think uh, if you stuck this far to watch me shit, you probably liked it. So I appreciate your I appreciate your um, patronage. God bless.